Um, if you have, so if you have, say, two wheels that are in line and uh, they are mounted to the same chassis, um, so then what we're trying to prove is that no matter what, they will always read the same changes in, in uh, value. So if this, um, the chassis, basically there's three um, types of motion. There can be motion forward, motion to the right, and motion turning, right? And any motion they can do is some linear combination of those, right? So um, motion to the right, let's start with that. Remember, these are omnibules. So they measure the component of motion of that point that's in this dimension, right? So motion to the right, they'll both read zero, right? They'll both read, uh, they'll have no, well, let, let's say we're representing this as velocity, okay? Um, motion to the right, they'll just read zero no matter what the velocity left or right is. Motion forwards, uh, dx, velocity x, dy, and omega. Um, so motion forwards, they'll both read by, right? That's fairly easy to prove. The more complicated one is rotational motion. So, um, question is, if the robot is rotating about this center point, and you have a, we'll do it for one wheel, uh, and you have a wheel that's set delta x, which in this case would be negative because it's to the left, and delta y, which in this case is positive, because it's up. Um, and you are rotating at angular velocity omega. What is the uh, what is the velocity of that 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 wheel measures? Right? Does that question make sense, please? So, uh, well, what velocity is it traveling at? What velocity does it measure? Yeah, because, because you it, it, it does not measure left, right velocity. It, it only measures forward, backward. So basically, what is the forward back component of that point, uh, of uh, the velocity of that point on the robot? Because that's what the wheel is reporting. Make sense? So how we do that is um, first we figure out what the actual velocity is, and then we can, not too difficult, turn it into just that component. So this, um, call this H, because it's also a uh, so h equals, this is obvious. So that is uh, how far away it is from the center. Uh, and then, so if, um, so if uh, something is a certain distance away, actually I'm going to call that r. Uh, does anyone remember? Any rotational kinematics? Absolutely not. Great. <laughs> what you may remember is uh, if you have something that's spinning, the velocity of a certain point is the angular velocity of the thing that's spinning multiplied by the distance of that point from the axis of rotation. In this case, axis of rotation is the center of the robot we're saying, right? So, um, so. Uh, the velocity, which in this case would be in that direction, right, uh, perpendicular to uh, r. So velocity is r omega. Okay, um, equals uh, omega times root delta x squared plus delta y squared. Right. So to get the forwards backwards component of that velocity. Uh, we multiply um, by the sine of, let's call that alpha, the sine of that angle, okay? Does that make sense why we do that? Um, because if we have, wait, I'm sorry, the sine of the opposite angle. Um, so this angle here, is the same as um, this angle. So I'll make that longer. So that's v. So that angle is the same as that angle, right? Because these are perpendicular. Same kind of deal as here. Um, so we have v y equals um, 
v in actually in this case negative v sine alpha. Let's sub everything in that we have. Uh, negative omega uh, root delta x squared plus delta y squared sine alpha. But actually, we can instead of sine alpha, what is the sine of alpha? Uh, it's opposite over hypotenuse, right? So negative uh, delta x over um, over uh, r, right? This is r, right? So those cancel out. So it's actually just equal to omega um, negative scan. So it's actually just equal to omega delta x. Right? So that means, to your question, what is by for this wheel? It's also omega delta x. It does not depend on delta y, which is how far forward or backwards the wheel is. So therefore, for any delta y, we always get the exact same uh, the exact same result uh, for how fast the wheel is spinning. Uh, conceptually, you can kind of think about it as if so. If you know the if you know the normal of x drive, which is just two on wheels in the front, two on wheels in the back, chained together, that chain means your front wheel and back wheel have to be spinning the same amount because they're chained together, and they're both omni wheels on the same line. And of course, neither of those wheels slip because it's it would make it a horrible drive if they did. And you can move that robot forwards, back, or left, right. You can do whatever you want with it. You can just, sure. yeah. And so they have to be spinning the same amount because they're chained together. So if you see the majority of X robots, it relies on this fact. 